Hi there Shutterbugs! Today we'll be going over another Panasonic tips and tricks video using the Panasonic FC300 going over how to do a time lapse. Let's get started! So just so you are aware, I was planning on doing an awesome time lapse of the sunrise. Turns out I made a mistake and I will show you where I made a mistake in this walkthrough. Um, so unfortunately you have a time lapse of me working in my office, which is not nearly as beautiful <laughs> or uh, even photogenic. Um, but it does make it look like I worked really hard. So there's that. A time lapse gives you that effect of a video being fast forwarded, but what it does is it takes so many pictures, so many seconds or minutes apart from each other, which is how you get uh, flowers blooming in um, live action. It's a combination of pictures combined into a flip book. That's what you would call a time lapse. And Panasonic cameras can do it inside the camera. It's actually pretty awesome. So today we're going to go over how to set it up and how you can do your own time lapse. So on your Panasonic camera, now this one specifically uh, is the FC300, it's a bridge camera, but roughly you should be able to find it in roughly the same place on all of your Panasonic cameras. So you're going to hit your menu and where it's going to be, it's going to be your camera tab, the first tab there at the top. It's going to be on this camera, page four, and it's going to be time lapse shot. So when you open up time lapse shot, you can choose the starting time. You can choose your shooting intervals, so shooting every 17 seconds, and your image count, so how many pictures you would like it to take. Um, so depending on what you're doing a time lapse of, you can look to see what other people have done for specific things. Um, this I had set up for the sunrise. I was trying to aim for about an hour's worth of images when it came down to it. So what I accidentally did was shooting interval, I put 60 minutes. So guess what? It, it took two pictures in an hour from the time that I started it to when I went to go and get the camera after it finished. So that was wrong. Shooting interval is how, you know, how much time passes before it takes another picture. So in this case, every 17 seconds, it took a photo up until it reached a thousand. Now I will tell you that it only took about 300, 330 pictures before the battery on this died. However, it saved the fact that, hey, I'm doing a time lapse and it gave me a signal saying, hey, the battery's dying. So I could go out, swap the battery and continue the uh, time lapse, which was really cool. It's also really neat that it goes into a power saving mode if you don't have it set to start for, say, an hour. And you can set it up, you can tell it exactly when to start, set a certain specific time, as long as you have your date and time set, it should be correct. And then it'll just do it all on its own, which is really cool. So if you happen to find, like, say, a AC um, plug, to dummy battery for this camera, then that would be ideal to do a time lapse with. Uh, and you can do an extended amount of time without worrying on changing the battery. At that point, you just have to worry about how much space you have on your card. Um, but it's great because after you've done it, so if I press play here, here's the time lapse, and you can tell that by the little timer here by hitting that and it just goes through and pl starts playing it right away. You can view it right here on the camera itself um, instead of it being so many different pictures. Now, when you pull this into your computer, it will have it as um, many, many pictures taken apart from each other. So it did save it to three different sequences because naturally the battery died twice. So this one took 288 pictures, this one took 372, and this one took 340 before the battery decided to die. So you would take all of those pictures, you would put them into a program like uh, Adobe Premiere or another video editing program that you have on your computer. There are some free ones as well. 
and you would just look up the best way to do a time lapse and combine it um, in that program uh, to turn it into an actual video. So it's actually pretty darn cool if you have a cool subject <laughs> unlike mine. Um, but other than that, it's super simple to do on this camera or even any Panasonic camera, as long as you know what it is and what those menu subjects mean. So if you guys have any questions regarding on uh, doing a time-lapse tips um, on certain subjects to do a time-lapse of, or if you have something else that you would like me to go over in the camera itself, give me a comment below, I'll be happy to help. And until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration shutterbugs. Bye.